I really appreciate you listening to the podcast here. Let's go get started. Hey, everybody. It is August 7th. I believe it's Wednesday. You know, when you work from home, you really do tend to get lost on the days of the week. Uh, and what's most, uh, thank God for garbage day is all I got to say. Thank God for garbage day. I am so happy to have you back with me today. I am also happy because I know I bring it up, but wow, I, the fact that you come back every day, there are quite a few of you doing that. And I really appreciate it because I get up I at, at night before in my chair at night, I always am thinking about what do we want to talk about tomorrow? And I kind of, you know, scan the news, see what's breaking. And then in the morning, I, of course, always I call it reading the paper as if I'm like a 70 year old. Isn't that cute? Reading the paper. But really, I go through headlines, social media, uh, read some articles about what's really happening and want to bring the best to you of what's going on that will help you do a better job in your role as a citizen who is engaged in this campaign. And, you know, I'm like so curious all the time and I love learning and I'm hoping that you're enjoying this journey if not for any other reason than that, just having some cool people to hang out with and know that other people listening are like-minded in many ways. So today's pod uh, is going to be a little bit of one of those hodgepodge kind of pods. And I'm going to start with the stuff that I think is most important first. And then I want to talk, I'm going to end with talking about the subversion of Georgia's elections and what's going on in Georgia, because we need to hug Georgia. Georgia's going to need a lot of love. And this is, again, it has... Um, a partisan bias, but that's not what it should have. And that's why I keep talking about elections as civics and something we need to care about because frankly, what, how you vote and who you vote for is your business and nobody should be trying to stop your vote. So let's, so let's, let's, um, roll around here. First thing I'd like to do is just, it's a little bit of a program highlight, except I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to roll with these because um, of breaking news. But I do want to get into the issues. And what I'm not planning to do is talk about, uh, really not talk about sides as much as what the issues are. And prior to doing that, there is this amazing website. It's called I Side With, I-S-I-D-E With dot com. And this is a a quiz. It's really going to, it kind of gave me a headache. It's very complicated. You don't have to make it be complicated. You can just kind of knock around and and put your best guess for some of these things. Kind of like I did it on my intuition the first time. I actually need to go back and read and they provide all that to you. But it allows you to take a look at the issues and and what's in play. I would say that's it. In fact, if you go to that, if you go to iSide.com, I side with isidewith.com forward slash polls, which is one of the ways there's a quiz, there's polls, there's discussions about the parties, um, candidates, all that sort of thing. But under polls, it lays out the social issues. And so um, and not just the social issues, all the issues there. One of the issues are social issues. And we'll dig into those as we get closer. And I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to get into a lot around gender transition and um, that sort of thing. I'll, I'll, in fact, just to help you n- understand what falls under social issues, what helps you understand what's going on with domestic policy, things like gun control, the Supreme Court, um, arming teachers, that sort of thing. Then we'll take a look at education, school vouchers, charter schools, free college for all. There's some uh, really awesome ideas out there about what to do with these things. And then, of course, the electoral issues, that's all around voter rights, Electoral College, how the PACs and lobbyists um, are involved in our process, which we haven't even gotten to yet. And then economic issues like taxes and fair pay and minimum wage and um, something called universal basic income, which we've seen people experiment with and has had very good results. But it is not a classic American thing to think of people having universal basic income. That's just not something in the, in the United States we've really embraced in the past. Does it mean it's not worth considering? I don't know. We'll get to it later. And then um, I think we'll, we, we get to immigration issues. Oof, talk about the third, third rail of politics right there. Immigration, that is um, really complicated for me too. And I don't know if there's an easy answer, but we'll talk about it. And then healthcare, the environment, criminal issues, law and order, foreign policy, and housing, 
and then they get into science and national security and technology, which technology things like should we ban TikTok? So it's um, really, really cool to take to take to look at this site and look at these issues. I apologize. I had to sneeze. Okay, so I I side with dot com. Take a look at the issues there. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. There is a lot here. And it's interesting when you think of the fact that the executive branch of government needs to have opinions about all these things. Oh my God. It's just, it's just, it's overwhelming. I mean, I know they all have staff and there's people that are responsible for things, just like how we all manage our lives. Like somebody's the good at this and somebody's good at that, but holy cow, the number of issues we face as a society. And, and actually that's why I'm really glad that politics has gotten fun again, because I actually care about a lot of these things and they've just been in constant not getting anywhere for the last 12 to 10 years, 10 years, maybe but we just haven't really been getting anywhere. So take a look at the issues and what your assignment is, is you need to decide the three or four or five issues that you feel really strongly about. That will really help you know where you stand. And it'll also help you know with whom you stand, because there are a few of these things that it, it matters very much who you pick. So I'll have you take a look at that. Then I'm going to shift now because the reason I'm going to talk in a minute about what's going on with Georgia's plans to subvert the elections is that I am just so insanely an advocate for everybody having the right to vote. It's just the coolest thing in the world. I don't care what anybody says. You're going to hear me say it every day. I think it's the coolest thing in the world that we get to decide who it is that aligns with our values and will help take our country forward. And like I said, losing sucks, but it happens and it usually isn't so catastrophic as it has been lately. So one of, um, there's a woman named Olivia. Hang on a second. Let me just get her bio because I'm reading this off of her Twitter. Okay. She's the CEO and CEO and co-founder of the Fresh Starts registry. And what she's here to do is to really support women in their vote. And you know, it's interesting. I'm going to take a little sidetrack here because there's a very interesting relationship between domestic violence and voting. And it has to do with authoritarianism and women not being perceived as having free choice, the right to choose and having a brain. So often advocates for voting come out of those of us in the true crime er uh, arena are victim advocacy. They come out of that victim advocacy. One of the most important things for these women of survivors of domestic violence is to have them vote. My God, imagine the laws they'd be, they'd stand behind the managing the kind of ways they'd want to see law enforcement change. Imagine the way they'd change healthcare and rape reports and everything. If, if women, if the survivors of trauma were really going to make a difference in this world collectively, their vote has to count. Their vote just has to count. They cannot be seen as an extension of their husbands. They cannot be seen as property. They cannot be seen as chattel. And I hold my hand out to every woman who has been traumatized and say, grab my hand and hang on. Because I know that battle I sat with tens, dozens, dozens of women who were raped by the Golden State Killer. I sat with the uh, murder victims too, but we're a little bit different because it didn't happen to us. It happened to our friends, the rape victims. I have sat with these women. I have um, prayed with these women. I have screamed with joy with these women. I've sat in a very large ballroom at Sacramento State in a trial during the pandemic with these women. I'll be damned if I cannot strongly enough tell you I will take your hand in the path of survival of trauma because it matters that you find your voice. That is that is the first thing that's taken from you and it's the first thing I want you to have back. I, I'm lucky, I think because I've been single my whole life, I have been shut up at work, but in my personal life, I am allowed to speak and that's been a tremendous force of power and nature for me. Like, well, look, I just fire up a podcast because I just think I get to talk. I mean, that's how privileged I think I am. I want that for every trauma survivor. So now let's get back to the voting because this is really important to understand trauma 
and voting. They just, there is a relationship there. And I, and, and whatever we can do, if you have neighbors who don't even know how to get out of the house to get to vote, guess what? You're going to the Piggly Wiggly or Aldi's or wherever the heck we all go out here at Safeway. But you take them on a shopping trip on voting day. You're going to go come home with groceries. But in the meantime, you're going to help them get to go vote privately and securely and without being traumatized by somebody who doesn't want them to vote their own minds. So here's what Olivia is talking about. Can my husband find out? This is a question she's getting a lot at her center. Can my husband find out who I'm voting for for president? And she says, we've been getting this question a lot. So she rounded up some facts and she um, says, it's not legal advice, but I'm going to tell you this voting is, does it require legal advice? You're allowed to vote. So here's what she says. With the election for president coming up, we've been getting questions about voting. In particular, can my husband find out who I'm voting for? While voter laws vary by state, we want to remind you of a few things. In a presidential, and I'm going to, I'm going to add general election, because this is when you don't get a party ballot, you get a general election ballot, because there are two parties on the ballot where they're asking you to choose. So that's a general election. Often, unless your state's made a change, often in midterm elections, you only get to vote for your party because they're saying, hey, here's all the people that want to play from your team. Which people do you want on the team? And that's a midterm election. By the time we get to the general, we're like, oh my God, it's, mm, let me think some of my greatest rivalries. Oh my God, it's San Francisco versus Green Bay. Oh, oh my, don't even bring Cheeseheads um, respect, but no, we beat you. We, our goal was to always beat Green Bay. And don't give me the stats because I don't know that we always did. But uh, aside from football, I'm sorry. And I haven't even been following football. Walls has got me back on football already. It's pathetic, but more as a general, it's not as a specific team uh, follower. Although, like I said, maybe the Chiefs. So here's the deal. In a general election, the one where you get to choose which team you want to back, you can vote for anyone on the ballot and from any party. For example, if you are a registered Republican, which it might be the case for a lot of women who are married to a Republican, you can vote for the Democrat for president, vice president, and set, and etc., even if you are a registered Democrat. So your ballot is private. You don't have to change your party to vote for the nominee of the other party. One of the coolest groups, and, and mad respect, is a group on Twitter called Republicans for Harris. And these are the Republic, and they, they actually merged with the Haley um, voters, Haley Republicans for Harris as well. They merged together because these are the GOP people who belonged to the old GOP. I think the GOP calls them rhinos, but I don't think that's fair because I think the rhinos are actually, what is this, Republicans in name only or whatever that's called. That's ridiculous. It just actually means they're the regular Republicans. So the regular Republicans, you know, like Kinzinger and uh, Mitt Romney and I know that we used to have regular Republicans. I just can't think of any right now. The Re- regular Republicans are also are, are forming groups on Twitter and they're joining and they're saying that, that we need to do this so we can clean out all the legacy crap that we've accumulated in the last 10 years. So you can be a registered Republican, go to the voting booth and vote for whomever you want in a general election. Your voter information is your voter information, meaning the party you registered for is what is public, but your vote is not public. So you can walk around, you can go get your mega gold dress and your big blonde hair and find a guy with boots and a golf club. I, I, I don't know how this works because that's not who I hang around with, but I'm just saying you can do whatever you want to do. You can pose, you can you can do, you can walk as confidently as you want around the people that don't agree with you and still vote the way you want to vote in the voting booth. This is so important. All you have to do is not tell them who you voted for. You can either take the line, which is that's private, or you can just say, who do you think? And, and they'll, that, that should be enough. That should be enough. You can just get out of it. Um, so I think if you choose that it's between me and the ballot box response, you're likely to get uh, hassled. So I would just do that. 
nice, I'll call it the shit eating grin and say, who do you think I voted for? Especially if you're around peers that you think are going to assume you voted differently than you did. And again, I'm not interested in who, I, I think I have a lot of opinions about who you should vote for, but that's my opinion. I think you need to do the work and that's why I'm here. So this is really important. Just understand that nuance. And I'm going to remind us again, check your voter status. If you live in a state that's not Massachusetts or New York or California, and I hate to say it's those three that really are fastidious. And there's probably some others. I'd love to know some other states that are, I bet Minnesota's got this locked down. Um, voter, voting is something you need to, your voting registration is something you need to verify and you need to be about as aggressive about it as you can. You cannot register online in some states. They make you think you can, but you need to really read the fine print. And I know Texas is one. Um, we'll do a little quick state review in the weeks to come I, as we get closer. I'm going to take, I'm going to keep August a little bit light and stay with some of this fun because this is great stuff. What's happening in the world today. So those are the two big things. Go to isidewith.com. Look at the issues. Number two, really understand the nuance of a general election. You don't change a party affiliation. You can vote for whomever you want. That's when you get to choose the team you want to back. You've chose the players in the primary. Now you're choosing the team you want to back. Unless, of course, you're in Georgia. And if you're in Georgia and you choose the team you want to back, you probably aren't aware that as of, I think it was yesterday, the fifth, okay, two days ago, as of two days ago, but I believe it was ratified last night, there are three people responsible for, uh, or well, there are groups of people responsible for elections in every state, typically by county. If you listen to Rachel Maddow, she says it's by county. I suspect she's right because she does her due diligence. Those counties are hiring electors uh, or election board officials. They're not electors. Electors are the people who vote for the president at conventions the election board officials. And these election board officials are supposed to essentially watch the game along the way as the game is being played, watch the score. And when it gets to the end goes, yep, that's right. That was what happened during the game. And that is the score. They are not supposed to be players on the field since we're using gamesmanship and metaphors all over the place here by these, these, certification boards now have just given themselves a new right to basically become referees on the field. What they want to do is get out of the box upstairs where they belong up in the statistician box. That's really where they live. They're supposed to be up there in the statistician scorekeeper's box, but instead they want to jump down on the field, become the referees. I, I'm sure they would love to have slow-mo playback if they could, but they want to get involved on the plays and that is not what an electoral board member does. They would have no way to understand the context of the play. They are in fact not players. They are not prepared to in any way handle a dispute on the field. And any disputes on the field are run by the regular people who are manning a polling station. It's honest to goodness. They've done this for centuries. It is not this hard. It is not this complicated. In fact, I couldn't believe when we had hanging chads in 1992, right? That to me was like, how did you manage to just take hard Florida and turn it into cluster? But again, I did invoke the name Florida. So I think we might understand how we got there. This is not that hard anymore. In fact, if we could just all agree on a way to vote, which I am personally biased for mail-in voting because it allowed me and my mom to sit down, really talk about it, fill out our ballots together. I could make sure her ballot was what she thought intended it to be. I could make mark my ballot. It was fantastic. I love voter reg- uh, mail-in ballots. Um, we've even gone, our big tradition in the family is we, especially if there were any kids, this was really true when the kids were, when Katie still lived here, we'd all go over to the IHOP, get us a big old table and people would just start tearing apart their, um, fake ballot, you know, you get a pretend one and looking into issues and people would ask questions and, and it was no judgment. It was just debate, but I loved watching the teenagers debate and, and we would do it with my mom. I'd always bring my mom cause there's nothing like having a geezer at the table. I guess that's me now. Great. Um, but it was a family affair. Again, I was raised in a household with politics and speech and debate and looking at ideas and challenging the way people think was kind of <laughs> my bread and butter. So this, what's going on in Georgia, I need everybody to pay attention. This is also happening in a number of other states. 
I will bring you that news, but it is a cry and shame and nothing should be allowed to suck the fun out of our renewed vigor around elections. Regardless of who you are, this feels good. It feels good to be an American again. It feels good to be just, just positive. And the word is joy. And that's, that's always my word. That's the number one word I seek all the time is joy because it doesn't have to last long. It can just be in a moment, but it also can be a mindset in how you approach the world. And I'm, you know, as we know, compulsive optimist, compulsive. So thank you for listening to today's pod. Thank you for making my day and joining me on this journey. It is day 92 folks. That means we've been doing this already for 10 days. And as, um, as Governor Walls said, 100 days, that's nothing. This is nothing. Like, if you don't want to smoke during these 100 days, stop smoking. If you don't want to eat any more uh, uh, processed foods for 100 days, let's go. We got 100 days to hang out together. This is the way to do it. I'm so happy you're with me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Make sure you subscribe and rate, and I'll be back with another episode really soon.